no idea where we're going we're just a running back we got our heads in the clouds just trying to keep on track you can see that it's near it's something not to fear cause we've been searching for so long now there's nothing Ladies and gentlemen, live in the voodoo room, we have the charismatic Mr. Aaron Shembury. Pete, how are you, mate? I'm very well. Nice to be here. Indeed. It's good to see you in the flesh. I know. It's which been is, a while. It has. It's been a while. I think the last time I saw you was at Birds, probably late last year. I think so, I think so. Was that for you? Did was that? Were you standing next to me? And uh, I went to see Joe. Then. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. right. Okay, yeah. with your mate. Yeah, and yeah. he's a keen uh, Black Sorrows fan, is he? Yes, or, yeah? he's converted to a Black Sorrows fan now. So okay, great. He's listening to all their stuff. <laughs> is, is he a musician as well? Yeah, he's a singer, songwriter, plays uh, guitar, does oh, all great. that sort of thing. Terrific. So. Yeah, he looks like a rock and roller. Yeah, he's covered in tats. He's, yeah, <laughs> could he not? Yeah, that's it. So um, <clears throat> you grew up in Reservoir, mate. What was that like? Good. Good. Yeah. I've got all oh, limbs are still attached. Yeah. Um, my my folks lived out at Reservoir for pretty much their whole marriage. What, so that since the 60s, 70s? Yeah, well, my grandparents actually lived around the corner from my the place that my dad bought. Yeah. And um, my grandparents moved to Reservoir back in the, I think, maybe mid-60s. Because there would have been paddocks out there back then, mate. Yeah. I remember my granddad telling me, you know, see over there, you could see the main road from the back yeah. step, you know. It was like, oh. But I suppose that's like anywhere, mm. like Doreen or mm. any places out that way, yeah. everything's just shooting up. So. Oh, yeah. The evolution of, of <laughs> housing. Yeah, because I, I um, knew a few, you know, growing up, I knew a few people from Reservoir. But, I, I you know, my, when I was uh, picturing where Reservoir was without going there, I always thought it was some place out in the, middle of the, the country <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. You know, it was sort yeah. of weird. You know, yeah. Reservoir, where the fuck is yeah. that? You know, <laughs> and um, and then I worked with a guy from Reservoir, and I went to his house, and I thought, oh well, it's not far from Thornbury, yeah. so it's yeah. it's sort of relative, you know, yeah. to the CBD. I mean, it's only like twenty k's out from the CDB, right? Something Pretty like much, that. Yeah. Probably not even. Yeah. Um, and that's where you began your um, guitar playing was in good old Reservoir. Yeah, I um, my the primary school I went to was out at, at Reservoir, and uh, I was learning piano at nine or whatever it was. And uh, by the time I finished at primary school, I was you know ready for high school, and I thought, well, playing piano is not going to be <laughs> cool enough, <laughs> you know. So I went and learned guitar. And then uh, yeah, I had a few uh, a year years worth of lessons out in Thornbury, mm. and yeah, I mean, I think we were talking about this before. Yeah. I wouldn't know what else to do with myself. <laughs> you know, that's what I what I do. Yeah, I know. But how does a uh, what were you, eleven year old kid make yeah, a decision like so def- defined a defined decision to say this is what I'm going to do and this is it? You know, from that age, yeah. you know what I mean? Because most kids at eleven have that idea but whether or not that translates into their reality is another or thing you know follow through. Yeah. yeah i mean i'd be lying if i didn't if i said i wasn't laughed at when i decided to go yeah i want to do music full time i had no idea about gigs or what it took to do a gig and you know so i just persisted with it and when the opportunity opportunities came up i, I took it and mm. i'm thankful i did otherwise <laughs> i wouldn't be here yeah you know well, it's a long road, isn't it? Though I mean, uh, from that early, yeah. from that early, but it goes very quick too, doesn't it? I mean, one minute you're practicing in your room, going, "I can't Absolutely. wait to play my first gig at some pub." Absolutely. Whether that was your 
ambition initially, you know, to go, the pub is my ultimate goal at this point yeah. in time. Um, or were you playing school shows and and then sort of progress from there? I didn't do, throughout high school, I, I didn't do music. I didn't no? pick it as a subject. I was doing the lessons out at Thornbury and then I was sort of teaching myself. Yeah, like right. I was listening to what Dad had in his music collection, you know, and Mum, what she had. You know, the first concert I went to was John Farnham. I was, you know, 11 or 12. And then a few weeks later, Dad took me to see John Fogarty. And I was like... Man, I want to do that. Like, you know, you're watching Fogarty up there. Every song he had a different guitar and, you know, knowing what the guitars mm. are, were now, um, it sort of just made me go, yeah, I'll, I reckon I can do it. Mm. <laughs> Whether it was well, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, you, I mean, it's irrelevant. I mean, you're still in your um, – you're in a process of learning still really, aren't you? I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like everybody oh, yeah. else, you know. You never stop learning. That's right. That's never, right. It doesn't matter what you do. I mean – you know, I look at my dad and he's still learning things, you know. Mm. Um, was he a musician as well or? No. No? He tried, but it didn't work. Okay. He, his dad was, so my I... grand, granddad mm-hmm. was. Um, and we were quite close, so when he found out that I was mm. wanting to do music, he's like, it sort of took him by surprise because nobody else in the family, and you know, Maltese, big family, no one was, was following in those footsteps. Mm. So once I... Once I pursued that, he he, um, he was absolutely wrapped, mm. you know, he, and he came to my first gig and, the you know, the two weeks before he died, he came to one of the, the last gigs. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's been passed down to the generations. Yeah. As you would know, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Howard's a legend. He's, yeah. he's He's awesome. He's getting all this stuff going. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. <laughs> You sort of um, uh, met up with Ross Hannaford. Uh, he was the mm. first person you sort of had influence from. Yeah. And that was via a music store, is that right? It was actually out at Musicland in Sydney Road, which is a, a venue. They've got a music shop. Um, I think at the time they had rehearsal rooms as well. Um, and Hannah came down for one of the jam nights and... Uh, you know, I, I had no idea who he was and he was wearing the most eccentric outfit possible, you know, bright orange tie or whatever it was and, and He looked and like a he looked like a Hare Krishna or something, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, pretty much. I remember looking and going, Oh jeez, I'd love to hear what he's gonna sound like. <laughs> Not knowing who he was. You didn't know who he was. You Not just, I mean I yeah. knew who, what Eagle Rock was, I yeah. knew what Come Back Again was and I knew what Daddy Cool was, but I didn't know the connection. Mm. And you know, it was when I found out, it was kind of surreal that he was there. Mm. And uh, anyway, I ended up jamming with him and, yeah, we just struck up a good friendship and it was more like a mentoring sort of thing uh, on his part, um, you know, because he sort of saw something in me that I but, didn't but, even see But the thing myself. is, I mean, how many kids were involved in that um, forum? I was the only one. You were the only one? Yeah, yes. I was the only young dude. So everyone else was... Much older. So they knew who he was. Yeah. And, you know... Um, so that gave you the advantage, really, didn't it? Because you were younger so, yeah. and that's why he sort of went... Yeah. And I and I think we were talking about this the other day. A lot of those guys... Um, I think I was talking to you about it. Um, a lot of those guys, you can sort of see how they're trying to pass the baton, I suppose, um, to the younger... Um, Generation. generation of musos. Yeah. Uh, Joe's probably the same. You know, he probably mm. sees things in support acts that support him. And, yeah. you, know, you know, these guys are talented. They yeah. deserve everything that's coming to them. That's right. Um, so it, it, in a sense, yes, I was lucky uh, and very grateful for that yeah. experience because I don't know where else I would have got that, Yeah. you know, and still to be doing it 11 years later. Because of somebody like that, it's sort of, it, it certainly goes a long way. It's, mm. it's quite special, actually, now that I th- really think about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, what a great guitar player. <laughs> oh, he was, he was incredible. I mean, I, I remember walking out of the art centre when I used to work there, and he'd be at the front smoking a cigarette, and I'd go, <laughs> Ross, how are you? Peter. And he'd always remember my name. Yeah. He yeah. knew exactly. And I only met him a couple of times, but. Yeah. 
he knew who I was and, you know, my name and stuff. And, um, and he was very, um, friendly. He was um, very welcoming. Welcoming, too. Yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, you're right. And, and Bart, Willab- Bart Willoughby was with him. At pack, oh, yeah, the, the, the percussion the, player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it's funny. I, I remember a couple of months later after I'd met Hannah the first time there at Musicland and I was in the city and he was busking. Yeah. And I couldn't wrap my head around, why are you busking? You know, mm. your playing is incredible. And I remember you know, later on after that I... I'd asked him, I said, well, why do you, how can you busk? More out of yeah. curiosity for me. Um, and he goes, I just love playing. Yeah. I love the fact that, you know, people aren't hassling all the time. Mm. You know, um, it's just, it was his outlet, you know. Yeah. And, it, you know, I don't know if he did it for the money, but that's beside the point. He, he loved playing. And you could see that every time he played or every time I'd gigged with him, you mm. could see how much he loved playing. Um that says a lot about who he was, I think. So um, you sort of uh, ended up is, uh, playing at the Colonial Hotel uh, via a friend's dad. Well, yeah, a buddy of my dad's um, actually played it. I remember him and his band playing at Dad's 40th. And that was probably about the time I was, you know, getting into the guitar or, a, you know, a year into learning guitar, whatever it was. And so this is before you met Ross Hannaford. Well before, yeah. Oh right, okay. Probably three or four years before, and okay. um, I remember being asked, "Do you want to get up and play?" And I was like, uh, "Maybe not." Uh, still a nervous young kid, and you know, two or three years later, um, the offer came up again, and I was like, "Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do it." You know, what better way to start learning? Um, so I did it, and yeah, I was playing with them for. A couple of years, and um, not many kids at my age were learn- were earning <laughs> two hundred, <laughs> three hundred bucks a month. You know, yeah, better than working at McDonald's. Oh yeah, like absolutely, so, more fun. And, yeah, and that that was at that period. I, I realized, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Yeah, I want to do it. You know, so and then it, it just all kept going so, from there. So the 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 friend of the family uh, was he? He's obviously what was he a uh, he was a guitar player. He was a guitar player yeah. as well. So yeah. you'd play rhythm and he'd play lead. Is pretty that how much, it went? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was pretty much. It started out, you know, get up and play two songs at the pub, and then next thing you know, it was the fifth member. <laughs> so, 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 so um, how did that feel? Like going to the club? Clo- what? Because I used to mix up the, that Colonial yeah, Hotel. We were talking about um, that, yeah. You know, very briefly, and I remember it was a quite a sizable pub. But not many people knew about it. It was kind of tucked away. It tucked think, away. It was in. Is memory. it still operating, or is it? No, it's not a pub. It's a a Chinese restaurant or a Thai okay. restaurant or something like that. So it's gone yeah. up in uh, in style. Yeah. At least you can get something to eat there. <laughs> yeah. Can't see music. You can't see. You can't see music, but you can get something yeah. to eat. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so this year's been, uh, you know, as we all know. Um, uh, we're coming to the end of 2020, and um, how did you cope during lockdown? I'd be lying if I said I didn't like it. Um, it just gave me a chance to, you know, a write, record, um, and just the downtime was something I hadn't had for quite. You know, you know what it's like for the musicians. We don't get annual leave. We don't get holiday leave. We don't get maternity leave if you're a female. But it was sort of it was good in a way. <laughs> Oh, oh, what what do you call it for fathers? I, I, well, I, I think it's maternity leave. It? I think so. Well, we don't get that. So excitement. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So it was it was really good for me to, you know, just do my own thing, you know, instead of learning twenty songs for next month, the, the next month's gig. Mm. Um, I really enjoyed writing. You know, I, I yeah. reckon I got ten albums worth of. Shit, <laughs> probably. Great. <laughs> you know, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see now that back now that I'm back gigging, how I'm going to get used to or trying to find the balance. Balance, yeah. You know, because um, you have lined up a few gigs, haven't you? Kept yeah. Going forward, so that's yeah. great. So things are picking up. Things are things are coming in, yeah, which is good. Um, sort of picked up in November, and you know, all through till March, I think. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm quite quite yeah. occupied, <clears throat> which is good. Till March. Oh, that's terrific because mm. uh, I think that's when they've uh, announced the uh, vaccination period. So <laughs> that's what uh, they reckon. it might be straight from the uh, from a festival. Are you doing any festival work or? I've got, um, uh, as mentioned before, the one with Kate Sobrano, JPY, um, Ross Wilson, mm-hmm. Brian Cadd and yeah. Glenn Shorrick. Now, that's, I'm that, excited that's, about that because yeah. I can't and wait to do And are you playing with all of those guys? Yeah, so they, they're they on the same bill with each other and we're the house band, you know. Yeah, right, okay. And, so, and where is that? Uh, the 20th of Feb is at the QPAC. Theatre in Queensland. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. It's a theatre gig. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Oh, well, they'll, they'll actually be allowed to have a full house. Yeah, and the thing is, I think it's two two shows in the one day. day yeah. So they'll do an afternoon and a, an evening Yeah, thing. sure. Um, but, yeah, I've got gigs coming up with Ross Wilson um, next year. Um, I think there's some stuff with Renee again. So, yeah, there's always going to be something to do. So you've yeah, become the guitar good. player for Mushroom, essentially. <laughs> Almost. I never thought of it like that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, all those acts are, uh, are generally uh, mushroom related, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, they are. But I never thought of it like that. Yes. So, so how, how, <laughs> did, how did you end up working for all these legends? Because um, it's it's not an easy thing to sort of. I mean, there are a lot of kids playing guitar. Mm. You know, why Aaron Shambry? I think the one thing I learned from Hannah was. Um, just keep your your head on the right level, you know. Respect. If you respect people in in the industry, they're going to respect you, I suppose. Mm. Um, and the th- good thing about working with these people is they don't have egos. Um, they're just fortunate. Well, they're thankful that they're still doing it. At you know whether they're seventy yeah. or you know mid seventies. Um, so yeah, it's more of a respect thing, and I think I think people see that. You know, especially in this industry, no one wants to work with a an arrogant pig. Sure. Unless you like that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, but you know that. But who, who was your first point? Who was the first person out of all of those people to uh, go, Aaron, outside of Hannah? Okay. Who, um, who brought you in? It was definitely Paul Norton and Wendy Stapleton. Okay. Um, they're kind of like the musical mum and dad, and they always have been. So especially at a young age, 17, 18, um, I could always ask for advice. I could always uh, rely on them to say, you know, hey, do this instead of that. Um, but how did you come across those two people? It was just through, I think I can't even remember, to be honest. Um, you, that sort of crowd, you sort of cross paths with people and people talk and, you know, um, obviously I was probably spoken about um and it just sort of yeah came from that i think so word of mouth yeah pretty much okay. pretty much um and then i think after that i was gigging with uh dave evans who was singing for acdc before oh, yeah, yeah 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 right. i think you... he was in rabbit as yeah. well um is he melbourne based i think he's sydney yeah that's what i thought yeah so, um, so he, when he'd come down here, he, I was he playing would, guitar he'd for pick, him. He'd pick you up. Yeah. Okay, great. Which was good. Cause what was that like? Was that like a rock thing? Or yeah, like, pretty yeah. much. It was more the, you know, the ACDC, the, the Rabbit stuff, um, and all these solo albums as well. And that was more hard rock. So, you know, I had the, I had long hair then, so mm. I sort of fitted in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, that was good fun because that was, uh, I think that was really, I suppose you could look at it as your first session job. Yeah. Like, you know, learn all these songs by this date mm. and play as best as you can. And you know, how old were you then? I think I just got my licence. I think I must have been 18. Wow, and that's half, pretty maybe. great, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it was, <laughs> it's uh, – as an ACDC fan, you know, I know he's a part of ACDC history, but um, – it was sort of surreal to me, you know, the the early hits like well, Can I Sit Next to You Girl and uh, Rockin' in the Parlour, I think was the other one, to play that with the guy that it's sang it on the yeah. album or, the, you know, the, the early album. Yeah. Um, it was a buzz, yeah. So he 
He actually did do a release with ACDC. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think the first single was "Can I Sit Next to You," right? Okay. And I think the B side was "Rocking in the Parlor." I could be okay. wrong on that, but I think it was. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that about ACDC. So I mm. thought it was it was Bon Scott who started. Well, yeah, that's a lot of people say that um, that they didn't know about that, and mm. I think there's a, a video clip of him playing with ACDC in one of those old town halls. And it was, can I sit next to you guys? Okay. And they were all flamboyant and had the shiny... The glam. Yeah. The glam. So they got rid of him and stayed away from that. <laughs> so um, what's been the most significant influence in your career thus far? Ooh. As in a, a, just a person or just Whatever, in just in general, man. Just, uh, you know, your music career, whether it's your music career or... I think definitely Hannaford. Hannaford, okay. Yeah. Mainly because it was... You know, he sort of opened the doors and when those doors opened, there was so much more that I didn't know about. I, I, I was so narrow-minded and thankfully he got me out of that. So, yeah, I think he would be the most influential. Even still now, after, you know, it's been So it wasn't just years. about playing guitar with him. It was more he gave you a philosophy. Just learning, yeah. yeah. He'd been there and done that yeah. for 40 years. So mm. how, how could I not... So what, how board. would he go about teaching you something? Like, for instance, if you if you went, if you had the guitar and you're strumming away yeah. and you, and he would say, Aaron, you know, you can do this rather than he, doing certainly, that. Yeah, yeah. Is that he, how he'd explain yeah, yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember being at his place once and he was trying to show me reggae. This was early on in the piece and he was a great reggae player. It was very unique and I'd never heard reggae. So he, he sort of... Show me, you know, the Greg, Gregory Isaacs, mm. uh, you know, Bob Marley. Mm. And he, you know, I remember him saying, less is more. Mm. So that was a big thing for me because yeah. as a as a young guy playing guitar, you think all of these notes, I've got to try and fit mm. them in all in this one song or one solo, which is absolute rubbish. Mm. You know, it, it, it's all about the space. And he was the king of that, I reckon. He, he just left, even on those Daddy Cool records, mm. you could hear where he comes in and then when he, Drops out, you know. Yeah, that's that's pure genius. Yeah, I think. well, they had good sense of um, space. Absolutely, you know. Absolutely. So yeah, one of the, one of the biggest influences I think was is. was uh, Hannaford. That's that's great to hear because uh, he's underrated. Like not, you know, like in in terms of, uh, I mean, I know a lot of them in the music world. They he's very, widely respected. Absolutely. And, um, uh, but outside of that, it's uh, you know the general the general yeah. public you know also uh, has a uh, they, they they look at him in high regard. Mm. So he he was a really nice guy. Yeah, absolutely. So you've released your first album recently, and yep. that was during lockdown. No, well, well actually last year uh, I'm, I'm get confused with last year because there's been nothing <laughs> this year. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a bit, uh, of, a, it's it's like a bit it, of a blur. It's, it's a void, isn't it? It's like. Yeah. 2019, and now we're going into 2021. It's weird. It is so weird. Um, but no, September 2019, I'd released the first album, um, City Lights, and I'd featured, well, they were all songs that I'd written, and I'd featured different singers on it. So um, Russ, Russell Morris, Colleen Hewitt, uh, Ross Wilson, um, Normie Rowe, like all these people that I'd worked with, with over the last f few years, um, just got them into you know, come and sing my set. Still, still spins me out, you know. Who am I to say, hey, I, I look Wilson, at, come I, and sing I know that song. you did that gig at the Mimo, right? It was at yeah. the Mimo, and that was your launch. That was the launch, yeah. yeah. So everybody on the album pretty came. much was there. Yeah, yeah. and that, that's great for you. I mean, for yeah. them to actually make the effort to come out and perform with you is uh, incredible. Again, like, back to the respect thing. Yeah. I think it's what it boils down to. Um, if I was an arrogant... 27 year old I don't think they'd give you the time of the day I mm. think but I still pinch myself when I look at that album and you know those guys on that album yeah. singing songs that I'd written and they were my first batch of songs that I'd written so they so they you picked each like you pick each person um, each person sang a particular song yeah. so you've got maybe 12 songs on the album there's 10 songs 10 songs yeah. And each song has a different vocalist. Yeah. Okay. So, and there were all different genres of music yeah. too. So the reggae thing, uh, you know, from Hannaford, which came full circle when Ross Wilson sang it. Um, you know, there's country music, there's blues, all the stuff that I love. Mm. 
and it was easy. It was sort of easy to pinpoint. You know, oh, I'll get Kevin Boris to sing this one. This is up his alley. Um, I ended up singing two on the album, and yeah, the rest were all these guests, which is <laughs> there's still a buzz. <laughs> how, how did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> so, is that something you're going to follow down the path of doing something similar for your next album, um, or be something totally different? As in having guests? Yeah. I mean, I'll get guests in, like, you know, to do BBs, but I'm actually enjoying singing my own. As funny as it sounds, I enjoy singing my own songs. Yeah. When I first started the album, I, I didn't like the sound of my voice, mm. and I didn't suit what I was writing. Yeah. So that's what made me go, well, yeah, I'll pass it on to somebody else. Yeah. You know, it just happened to be those guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's terrific, man. Yeah. That's... Uh, Something that not a lot of people would experience. So if you, that's why I'm no. so like I'm because uh, I when I mixed you when you were uh, playing with Renee, I thought he's only twenty seven <laughs> years of age, you know, yeah. and he's and he's playing with all these people that you know are my brother's era, you know, yeah. and uh, you haven't played with Joe though, have you? No, I, I actually the first time I saw Joe was I was gigging with Ross up in New South Wales somewhere, and uh, it was one of those festivals where everybody was on the bill richard clapton joe was on there um uh chocolate starfish and it was the first time i'd seen joe actually perform and tony floyd was playing yeah. drums and i did my first renee gig with tony, tony floyd. floyd yeah i think it was at birds and um yeah i was just i was watching side of sage and i was like i didn't know black sorrows did this song you know it was mm. just it was all sort of hitting me then i was like oh man and then i came to the birds gig that um that night, and uh, yeah, it was like, oh, he's pretty, pretty talented. <laughs> mm. He still got it. Yeah. And uh, why, why do you think people get involved in music? I mean, you got involved in music because of uh, an interest you had as mm. a young person. But why do you think people choose music? I think there's two sides to this. Um, there's the ones that genuinely love what they do um, and I suppose have the talent for it um, or the work ethic but there's the other side where I mean you look at these X Factors and The Voice and all that and there's a handful there that are, have done the hard yards and gigged in pubs and you know done all that sort of thing but there's a majority that just want the fame and the attention, if, if you know what I'm trying to say. So I'm not interested in that side of it. Um, I like seeing – well, I like I love the musos that put the effort in. Like, you know, you had Taylor Sheridan on here. He's one of the hardest working mm. young musos you'll ever find. Yeah. And he loves what he does. Mm. Um, yeah, I think uh, – hopefully the answer would be you do it because you love it. Yeah. It's like anything. If you – as I said before, you don't – like but you, what you, but do, you, you do but it. you had an interest as a young person, which, I did, yeah. which you followed through. Mm. Do you think that's true for a lot of people? Do you think that most people who do play music, so, I mean, I know some people find it in their teenage years or later in life, and that's cool, mm. you know, whatever period. You, but there's always something about the people who grow up with it, who follow through and mm. uh, have a really keen interest in music, you know, and. Uh, and, and because you come with that experience, when, yeah. you, when you perform, you've got those influences. You've, they're the, you know, that that's what I was talking talking about before about those influences mm. that they actually they shine through. Yeah, whether you're conscious of it or not, but in yeah. your in your writing of your material, uh, you'll you'll go, geez, that's something something in the vein of Jackson Brown mm. or you know whoever it may be Absolutely. that you sort of liked as a young person. Yeah. You know, so. They're the influences that I find that um, tend to shape uh, the sound of people's maturity in their music rather than it's very hard, as you always hear people say, oh, I picked up the guitar too late or I picked up mm. this too late because I've, you know, I'm coming from a, I'm coming from like if you're a runner and you're a sprinter, absolutely, yeah. you've got the sprinter, then you've got the three down the line there and he's probably the fourth, you know, yep. and uh, yeah, yeah. But they're all doing it, you know. Yeah. Um, that's the sort of thing I'm trying to um, mm. put forward. But, yeah, it's a funny one, isn't it, that I, whole... Um, you can see that in the ones that live and breathe it too, I think. And I'm sure my influences come through in my playing or songwriting, as you said, 
whether it's intentionally or unintentionally, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, having the influences at a young age has really, I th- not progressed me, um, has maybe musically matured me a lot quicker than maybe some that are mm. my age. I don't know. It's an interesting one. Um, yeah, good point. <laughs> so, well, Aaron, um, I appreciate you coming in today. No it's worries, been terrific. Mate. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, if people want to catch you for uh, shows, they can look on your website. Is that correct? Yeah, website, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, um, all these socials. Uh, but, uh, yeah, well, thank you for coming. No worries, in, mate. mate. It's been awesome. Good to catch yeah, up. And, absolutely. Uh, have a great new year. And yeah, you too. We'll see you soon. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. You must have cast the spell. Where you got